stack that paper up and then make boss moves. Yeah. She like to argue, so I sent that to law school. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be a little different, as you can tell. I'm like just chilling on the floor right now in my room. Um, kind of just, I don't know, just doing my little thing right now. I'm kind of just debriefing and kind of coming down from the day. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Who? So this video is kind of just going to be like an update of, I guess, what's been going on lately, you know. So the first thing I want to say is if you know a law student or any student in any type of graduate program, please like reach out to them, ask them how they're doing. Um, because if their programs are as like time consuming and mentally draining and mentally exhausting as mine is, um, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, I'm still managing like I, there is some times when I'm just like I have to kind of give myself a mental break and I have to like go on like Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat. I have to do something to get my mind off of everything that I'm doing because it's like we have so much work to be done. I have four classes technically. So I have, of course, um, in your 1L year, you're going to take property. There's um, civil procedures. Um torts and contracts so i'm taking these four classes but i also have another class called lawyer and processing so um in this class we pretty much have to like write memos and practice on doing that then we also have a grammar class and then we also have a research component of that so um for example tomorrow i have my grammar test <sighs> <laughs> because um all the other classes that i've seen so far like we all everybody has the same grammar professor and um it just seems like the test might be a little hard i mean this is stuff that we should have learned like back in elementary and stuff but it's like we're still struggling but it's it is what it is it's whatever um so i have that test going on tomorrow and then i also have i just finished my midterms on monday today is tuesday so yeah yesterday was my last midterm um, it was an essay midterm, so it was kind of different. It's like, I feel like I can kind of write pretty well. Like, as as far as tests, I've been getting some of my grades back. And I mean, they've been decent. Um, there's always room for improvement because nobody ever has, like, we haven't gotten any perfect scores yet amongst my class. So, of course, that means I haven't gotten a perfect score yet. And um, I think I'm my toughest critic, so I just know that there's a lot, um, you know, more that I could be doing. So, um one thing about school i will say is that during this first year it's a lot of um remembering for like right now because it's very competitive there's so many people like everybody in the school is smart okay everybody is smart like you wouldn't be in law school if you weren't smart so everybody is smart and it's like we're competing amongst each other just to see like who is the i, I don't want to say smartest but that's essentially what it is like we're competing to see who it's like survival of the fittest so it's very hard um the program that i'm in uh, the bottom 10 percent. so we're divided into four sections i'm not really sure how other law schools work i haven't looked into their law schools or anything like that the only school that i'm familiar with is mine so with my school the way that our system works is there are um four different sections each section has their own um each section has their own group of professors so um like for each of the major, well, each class we pretty much have separate professors. The only class that we all have the same professor is the uh, legal, the lawyer and process grammar section. Everybody has her. Um, so it's like we're com competing not only against each other in our sections because the, okay. We're competing against each other in our sections because we, of course, want to be the top. You never want to be the bottom because that way you're closer to the curve. Um, but we're also complete competing against other sections because at the end of the year which is going to be in may i believe we're going to have a comprehensive exam and basically what that means is my professors are going to write like 15 questions and then each professor from each other section is going to write i think i think it's 15 questions so every professor is going to write 15 questions and the thing about it is you only know what your professor has been teaching you so you know some people have an advantage because they have the opportunity to you know kind of venture off and they make friends in other sections so they can kind of learn other teachers teaching style but it's really really hard y'all because the bottom 10 percent gets curved out and our class is like 300 something students and while that's like it doesn't seem like that much the fact is somebody has to go you know and 
the thing is like that's why i'm so focused on trying to maintain you know a healthy study and life balance um because it's so competitive and it's like everybody is really really trying hard you know we're barely one fourth of this first year through um so it's really hard y'all so um one thing i'm planning to do is to come back and start trying to like explain terms in ways that i've learned them so uh for example let me think let me pick up this book real quick um so right now i just have this is like a property book um this is just a regular like a course book that is like an asset well this book is kind of like a supplement so you'll have supplements that'll kind of help you with learning how to better apply what you're learning in your case book and y'all the case books um are big like this is my contracts case book this is one book okay and as of right now we're on page let's see i've read up to page hold on it's kind of i got a lot of practice stuff in here too um so i've read up to page four no 368 like this is where i'm at right now this this is me um and this is just for this one class so picture having i have four classes like this y'all so that means that for each class i've read so many pages and i have to take in so much information and you have to know these cases because any of these cases can be used on your exam but you never know which one they're gonna use <laughs> i gotta pick something that i actually know all right so for example the term unjust enrichment so unjust enrichment can really be used throughout like practically every topic i want to say um it may not necessarily directly say unjust enrichment but unjustment unjust enrichment is a term that i feel like can be used you know often um because with unjust enrichment it's pretty much when somebody has done no work to um do something um but they're able to get a benefit from it so um, for example, in my exam from uh, Monday, um, that was pretty much what the hypothetical was about, like all the way through. So in this example, um, Barry Bonds um, was, of course, he's a baseball player and he hit um, an all time record for the most home runs in his career. And I'm reading off this paper. So Josie. Um, which was a fan who was in the bleachers. She was in the very last row of the bleachers and she um, jumped up and caught the ball as it was about to leave the stadium. So had she not caught the ball, it would have went into a river, right? So um, immediately after that, um, Bonds announced that he was going to retire. So the following day, he called Josie and asked her for the ball back and then um, stated that he wanted to keep it in a trophy room in his house. And then Josie, because she's, you know, a factory worker she doesn't have that much money she has a kid um and she didn't want to sell bonds the or give the bond give bonds back the ball you know she planned to you know kind of solidify her future she wanted to put some money aside for her for her kid or whatever and she wanted to make sure that she didn't have to work as hard as she does so there was another component in this hypothetical but i'm gonna just leave it at that so a bond uh if barry bonds and josie were to go to court um both claiming ownership of the baseball um bonds can say that allowing josie to keep the ball would allow her to be unjustly enriched because she didn't do anything to deserve the ball you know all she just caught the ball like just catching the ball how does that make you the rightful owner of the ball just by catching it you know like you didn't put any you didn't put any work um he can say that he you know has been playing ball for xyz amount of years it was his retirement ball he deserves to have it um he should be able to put his you know final home run ball on display and preserve his memory and it should not just be sold to the highest bidder because that's unfair because she's gonna profit off of his work right so of course in this hypothetical i don't think that that argument is valid because i mean in other instances when a ball is thrown into the crowd or hit into the crowd, are they always required to return the ball? Not necessarily. So why should she have to do so? 
And if you really want the ball, Mr. Barry Bonds, and you making X, Y, Z amount of money, you can pay her. That way, it wouldn't really be unjustly enriching her. It'll just be you paying for what you really want back, right? I hope that makes sense. You can kind of apply that with other things, too. I, you know, if you if you understand it, um, let me know. I'm going to try to do better, but y'all, my brain is like on 10. It's running, and it's running, and it's running, and I feel like I kind of need to stop, but I can't because, again, I got a test tomorrow, and I have so much reading I need to do, so that's what I'm about to go do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start reading for the night. You know, it's Halloween, but ain't no Halloween, bitch like ain't no halloween when you in law school like you gotta just keep you gotta keep pushing you gotta keep going and that's kind of where i'm at right now so um i'm probably gonna be doing a lot more of these like impromptu videos where it's like not really just me in front of the you know backdrop and me with the light and like all the camera like i don't have time for that like i really don't so in order to kind of i don't want to necessarily say just put content out but i feel like this allows me to be my realest me in this moment telling you how i feel you know when it's just coming straight off the dome and it's not like planned or prepared you know it's just me kind of just giving you i mean this i can't get no more written like i'm on the floor y'all i'm in the floor in the corner like i'm just kind of debriefing to myself and i'm kind of venting through this so um i don't know I'm I'm really I'm gonna get on this whole um law school journey. I promise you. This is just gonna be the first installment. I don't even have a tripod. Like I'm literally holding this camera this phone up with my arm and it's low key heavy. Um yeah, so um pretty much yeah. So all this is just to say that my videos I really wish these dogs would shut up, but um this is just to say that my law school videos are going to be a little less organized or structured than my other videos. Even though those videos aren't really the most structured to begin with, you know. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I'm getting these things out. Um, if you have any questions regarding this whole law school process, I'm not the most, you know, informed. I, again, I'm, I'm like not even all the way done or halfway done with my first year yet um but i can try to help as much as possible if you have questions regarding like the LSAT i mean i can't really the LSAT is a whole different beast in itself so i'll go ahead and do another video eventually with how i mentally prepared myself to take that LSAT and um yeah so we'll see how this goes all right so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video peace out